just get used to things going wrong, and when they go wrong, just enjoy it, because th that is a lot of fun. Hello everyone, my name's Lorndon. Uh, I'm from Perth in Western Australia, and uh, the tour that I've been on is the Tour de Freak, uh, one of TVA's craziest challenges. And uh, unfortunately, due to COVID, I haven't been on any more, but they are definitely on my bucket list. You mentioned you did the Tour d'Afrique. Can you just explain what your role was on the tour? Essentially, uh, my role was to uh, spend four and a half months getting to play with cameras uh, from Egypt to Cape Town. And uh, yeah, I made a sort of documentary series about the trip, took a bunch of uh, awesome photos we did, uh, of things we did throughout the tour, and I also did the social media side of things. So sort of all the, all the content for TDA, and uh, the writers got some of that sort of stuff as well, which was uh, really cool, I think. Why did we choose you to, to come on the trip? What's, what's your background? <laughs> that's, that's, that's still a question that I, I wonder to this day. I'm like, how did I get so lucky? Especially like, sorry, this is a bit of a tangent, but what, I've thought yeah. about this a lot. Like, I was so lucky to go on the Tour d'Afrique right before COVID. Uh, it, it was almost like the perfect trip. You know, it's a bucket list type thing to do and I uh, feel super lucky to have gone that. So I do sometimes ask myself why TDA picked me, but uh, I think some of it has to do with the fact that I've got obviously a, me a media background. I, I run my own filmmaking business here in uh, Perth and I sort of shoot uh, small business uh, commercials, whether that's for TV or online distribution. And um, yeah, TDA, uh, I applied through a, a sponsored ad that I saw on Instagram, out of all things, uh, for this new position they were trialing. And uh, yeah, eventually got to go on the Tour d'Afrique and um, yeah, couldn't be happier with how things worked out. The work you do for your own company in Australia and some of the previous work you've done, I think, in TV production, how, how does it differ and, and what are the challenges with being a, a one-man show? I think most people don't really know. It's actually super difficult uh, to make something. Uh, usually when you're making sort of a, a documentary style production or something longer and more significant, you'd have multiple people. So you'd have a story director, you'd have someone who's uh, producing, so they're sort of getting all the background info, organizing all the whereabouts. You'd also have an editor, you'd have a shooter, and you'd probably have an assistant camera on there as well, and a sound guy. So it's usually like a five or six person squad, and that would be considered super small. So to go out and do four and a half months by myself, and to be doing all of those roles, uh, was, was pretty nuts, but I think that's like part of the, part of the fun and, and part of the challenge, right? Yeah, and, and the environment or the, the, the way the tour operates doesn't necessarily lend itself to uh, <laughs> making that any more simple. Like, you know, we're camping every night and, uh, you know, you don't have access to electricity every night, so lots it's of crazy. challenges. Yeah. What are you most proud of with that project as a videographer? I, it sounds really simple, but I'm actually most proud that I finished the project uh, because I'd never undertaken something personally of that length before. So for anyone who hasn't seen the film, definitely um, go and watch it. But uh, it's about a 25 minute, 30 minute piece. And that may not seem like a long time, but when you think you have to entertain someone for 30 minutes, and if they get bored once, they're gonna sort of leave the video, it becomes a bit more of a, a difficult sort of challenging thing to do. So I think my, the biggest uh, success or the thing I'm most proud of is that I created a story that I'm pretty happy with. Um, definitely some things, I wish I could go back and shoot it all again and, and tell it all over again, but uh, I'm really glad that it came out and that it, for me it tells the story of the Tuda Freak. It's, you know, it's brutal and it's raw and it's crazy and that's what you've got to be to sign up to do the tour in some aspects. So uh, I, yeah, I'm glad I, that I just got to tell the story and tell it authentically. Absolutely, and we get you know uh, hundreds of people viewing it every month, and so it's something we're also very, very proud of and very um, appreciative that you're able to pull it off. Um, so we'll put a link to that in, at the bottom of the video. What was the most challenging aspect of, of completing the project? So picture this, I'm kind of on the road for like three and a half months, right? I've shot 70% of the thing and I'm still trying to figure out like, how does this all come together? Like, how do I take all of these interviews and these amazing stories and these crazy long days of cycling and these rest days and how do I bring that all in? Like that, all that sort of stuff's going through my head. We're getting to the business end of the tour and I'm really thinking I've got to figure out how to close this thing off at the same time. So I'm having like all these kind of thoughts. And then we're like in, in Namibia, 
um, just crossed the border, or maybe just before we crossed the border mm -hmm. into Namibia, and uh, my uh, recorder broke. My um, uh, it's like this, this this little guy right here. Uh, just broke and, and wasn't working. And it might not seem like that's super important, but I needed this to record uh, every single interview that I uh, recorded. And so basically I was sitting there thinking, I'm in the middle of Africa with half a documentary and I need to shoot like 10 more interviews to close this thing off. And I was like, I'm just, I don't, I have no way to record any audio <laughs> for any of these interviews. And I'm just like, the film's gonna, that's it. It's, it's done and dusted there. Somehow, after um, a couple days worth of research, so I actually had to get one of the writers uh, who was coming from Canada and who I'd never met before um, to buy the part on Amazon for me and bring it over. And uh, I got it and made the film and it, and it finished. But I guess that's one just little insight of how crazy things can get. It's like if anything goes wrong out there, it's not like it just something new can come in. You're like, you're stuck with what we got. Yeah, no, it's a good story, and it, it's true for the operation of our trip as a whole. Like, yeah. you, you just, you don't really have, like you said, oh, you wouldn't be able to make the film without, but you would have anyways. Like, the, you, you don't really, none of us have a choice to stop the tour or stop filming or, you know what I mean? Like, it, it's a, it's, it has yeah, its own 100%. momentum, and, and so a lot of it is just, all right, I don't have the ideal set of circumstances how do i how do i move forward right so it's a it's a great yeah i've found it's for me personally it, it's uh taught me so many really useful s skills in that sense i think that's the the perfect mindset to have as well like if i could give any advice to anyone going on a tda tour it'd be uh just get used to things going wrong and when they go wrong just enjoy it because th that is a lot of fun like figuring out how to overcome and and still get to your end goal despite X, Y, and Z, and that was one of the things that I tried to do when I had that mini crisis. And I'm, uh, yeah, glad it did because it, it worked out. It would have worked out either way, and that's kind of the way you've got to be on tour. But th I think that's what makes the tour so much fun as well. Lonan, maybe tell me not from a videographer's perspective, but just uh, for your own personal journey across Africa. Do you have a favorite memory from the tour? Ah. Uh, you can't actually expect that. <laughs> you can't actually expect that I'm gonna have one. Like just one, yeah. <laughs> there's no way. Four and a half months. Like that's there's way too many uh, good memories in there. I think. Um, but for me, I think probably something that stands out the most is. I mean, I met one of my best friends on the tour. Uh, he actually lives in Canada, and I live in Australia. So obviously, in a COVID world, especially, we don't see each other too much. But uh, for me, that was one of the most crazy things to happen on the tour was to uh, get nice. along with someone else super well and to be, you know, amazing friends afterwards. Um, yeah. But there's way too many memories. I mean, like the avocado smoothies in Ethiopia, really good. Mm. Um, uh, food, probably food everywhere too, actually. And the location. See, now I just, no, nah, I'm not going to pick one. Don't do it. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah, no, it's uh, a myriad of experiences. It's some of it like it it's good and bad like it, it becomes a bit of a blur you know you get part way through the trip yeah. and there, there's an overload of experiences that it's uh, you ha like a lot of people do journals because they they just yeah. need to get it down on paper otherwise they, they lose it right it, it all just uh, starts to blend together with the a, new experiences yeah that's a really good idea that's something that I if I could go back I do wish I did something like that I want to switch gears a little bit, London, and for participants of the Tour d'Afrique or, or one of the other trips that we run uh, in different mm -hmm. parts of the world, do you have some recommendations for amateurs like myself who might just have a smartphone with a, you know, a decent camera on it, who still want to capture their own personal videos or photos? What would be like good equipment to have and what are some good just general tips on you know, getting the best quality shots? If you haven't got much experience in taking a photo, uh, a beautiful thing to think of is for composition is the rule of thirds. But essentially in every given shot, you should try and align something on the rule of thirds. So if you sort of split the uh, screen into these kind of two sort of, two lines horizontally and two lines vertically, there are these four little corners um, and they're sort of just off the center of the screen. Uh, 
and they're super interesting points. If you try and put something on that point, which is you know just a bit off center, like over here, or just a bit off center over here, uh, you're really gonna get an image that's super interesting. From the lighting point of view, uh, lighting's probably one of the, I mean, it's not like you're gonna have anything you can really do about the lighting while you're on tour because everything is going to be naturally lit so it's going to be daylight or it's going to be a fire or a street light so there's not really much you can sort of play around with but uh, what I always try and do is to put light on the part of the image that I'm interested in so if that's you know we're talking about that rule of thirds again and we have someone our subject here maybe we want him lit and we want the background super dark to give you some nice sort of contrast in levels of lighting or maybe we want to do the opposite we want to have him super dark like a silhouette and we just want to sort of see the the background so I think just trying to think about what you want your subject to look like in terms of lighting uh, is, is a good way to go, but there's not that much control that you're gonna kind of have on the day. Putting effort in is probably actually the biggest factor. Um, and, you know, even if you, you're a bit confused by the rule of thirds or you're, you're confused by that, what I was talking about lighting, there's super loads of uh, tutorials on YouTube you can learn super basic photography tips off. The role of the content creator is something that yeah. TDA is going to continue doing once, once we start running tours again. So do you have a tip yeah. for, or one or two tips for someone who would be coming uh, for the first time as a content creator on our trip? Being a content creator on a TDA tour is really tough. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie to you. Uh, yeah. and, that's, and, and that's mostly coming from the creative perspective because if you compare it to any other work that you've done before, you've had all of this time in pre-production with the client or you know the person you're shooting, you kind of understand the story and you know where things are going. Uh, and then you, you go and do the thing and then you, you go home and you have a shower and you, <laughs> you sleep in your super comfy yeah, bed exactly. and you wake up and you edit it the next day. Now, a TDA tour is completely opposite to that. You, you have to discover the story as you're <laughs> going through the tour, uh, and that can be a super difficult thing. So I think mentally trying to prepare yourself for the idea that yeah, it, things are gonna fly off the rails and that uh, dealing with it uh, is, dealing with it on the fly and being able to just go, that's okay, I can just do X, or that's all right, I can just do Y, and I can still bring that thing together. I think that's probably the most helpful tip I could have. I would definitely, uh, go and have a look at the, the content creators, uh, the, the previous work by previous content creators to see what their style is and you can sort of see what you like and, and sort of don't like about that. There's a lot of freedom and creativity in the role. So uh, yeah, I think there's, there's a lot of flexibility. You've just got to be ready to roll with the punches and sort of tell things how you want to tell them. Yeah, that's a good tip and I'll add to that and I think it was the advice I gave you at the start of the Tour d'Afrique was to to pace yourself because I think yeah. everyone, especially young uh, videographers, are, are very eager and like hardworking and, and want to, you know, get a shot of everything. And it's, you know, you're, you're also personally experiencing a bit of culture shock. You're in a new environment every day. So you, you feel this uh, overwhelming desire to shoot everything you see, but you really do have to pace yourself because you'll just get drowned in footage and, and burn yourself out too. So I think that's important. And with the Tour Afrique project, did you ever, because if people watch it, they'll see that there's several characters, so to speak, in, in yeah. the, the film. And did you ever think at the beginning that you might try to focus on one person's story? And, and if so, why, like, why did you decide to go in the direction you did? Yeah, so for anyone who hasn't seen the film, basically uh, each tour is obviously broken up into sections and for each section I focused on different riders throughout the tour and I made that conscious decision before I got to location and before I started filming the first interview and the reason that I decided to do that was because we didn't really have the pre-production considerations that you might have on something of um, a different nature uh, so you know if, if I was shooting a TV not that I shoot TV shows but if, I, if you're shooting a TV show for example you're gonna scope out all the characters first right you're gonna know right. who everyone is and you can kind of figure out these archetypes or where people might go but with a TDA tour you're dealing with a completely blank canvas you're walking into a room with 30 40 strangers and you're trying to figure out who's gonna be the best to tell a story like <laughs> Good luck to you. You kind of like, you see what I mean? You're like almost like you're choosing a, a card out of a hat or something. Like yeah. the chance of picking the perfect person right at the start, because you need the stuff right at the start, because you need the nerves and all that, right? So like you need them all the way through. So the chances of picking them right at the start is is it's it's random luck, really. 
So without that sort of, you know, pre-production considerations, and I don't really think that's possible in sort of a, a TDA setting, because it's not like I'm gonna sit down and interview all the writers for five hours before the tour to, to sort of figure out who they are and who might be best. So I made that conscious decision at the start of the tour to go, okay, well, why don't I focus on different people throughout? That way we get a big range of perspectives. We see people who are here just for the cycling. We see people who are here for the just for the travel. We see people who are here for the social interaction. We see people who are here because they've just retired and they wanted a crazy thing to do. We see this big range of perspectives and I think that's what I really like about the, the end product is that you get something that, um, it's actually sort of a summary of the group as a whole rather than just one person. Well, thanks a lot, London. It's uh, great to catch up with you. It's been, been a long time, but I appreciate you coming and chatting with us this week. Yeah, thanks so much for having me having me sorry and uh yeah i hope you uh if you're watching you learned uh, or this helped in a little way if you have any other questions uh my emails on my website feel free to hit me up i'm happy to help anyone going out on a big crazy tda tour and i'm sure the tda staff are happy to help with those questions too so yeah when once covid's done get out there and enjoy it and take some photos and have some fun awesome thanks a lot london